more millionaires or more multi-millionaires are made when there's fear. Not when this like feel good is going on right now, because right now everything feels good. Alright, so in this episode of the podcast, I want to talk about something called perception versus uh, reality, uh, what the world thinks. And I decided to uh, talk about this and actually even stream this live is because of a conversation I had uh, with my wife. Now, I'm not going to say what yet, but we're going to have some big changes in uh, our company uh, in the next uh, couple of weeks or so. And with those changes, she hasn't really told uh, some of her girlfriends about some of those changes, right? So, so it's kind of interesting where the idea and concept of when people that are not entrepreneurs, I guess, or maybe they just don't have the grind, they'll look at someone, they'll be like, hey, you know what? Why does that individual work so much? And then majority of the individual, they'll translate that into is because they have to, right? And that have to typically translate into because of financial things and stuff like that, right? And I had this exact same conversation with a, 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 one a young guy, a very successful guy in the real estate space, right? And not only that, but he's, he's actually very disciplined and very frugal, not like when I was very uh, young. Um, and the man does really, really well, okay? In terms of net worth and probably in terms of income, he's probably the top uh, one percentile of this country. So he does really well. But him being in the real estate industry, we kind of joke and laugh because this thing in the real estate space, right? What people do is they'll, like, they have a big month and they'll go out and go buy their S550 right their Mercedes uh, you know their high-end luxury car right and uh, um, what they do is they make income income grows but their expenses grow with them so essentially they're not putting any money away they're not investing and that's what happens and it's particularly true in kind of this Southern California real estate space right I know this I used to be part of it okay there's a reason why I drive a Mercedes and it, it's just really really interesting for me because we're getting into this conversation and I was talking to my wife about about that and uh, it didn't dawn on me that some of her friends and some of the people outside they perceive in the fact that I work a lot is because we need the money and I was just like really and I'm just like no I work hard because right now one I can and then two I'm building something and uh, um, I want to do this while I'm young right like like building a, a future and pretty much right so because I think a lot of people in their 20s and 30s truly around right and uh, sorry for my language but look at look at people if you actually ever and I know this for a fact right I, I, because when the recession happened last time I have to go back to the working world and when I went back to the working world and I worked for Bank of America right I stepped in there and I looked around and literally these people are supposed to be working for nine hours but I kid you not these people aren't working for nine hours they're maybe working for four hours that's it Right? Going around, trying to get some water, some coffee, some bathroom breaks, talking to their friends, and literally that nine hour work shift that they're supposed to have, they're legitimately working for four hours, five hours. But I come to realize when I went back and worked in the corporate world, right at Bank of America, I realized that was the case versus me, I'm just like, I just sit there and I just work, right? And then people will be like, why are you just working like that, you know? And then I'm just like, dude, one is you get paid commission. So, you know, like I want to maximize my dollars, you know? And then these people have like a one decent month or something like that and then go out and be like, oh yeah, you know, it's cool. And then the following month they take off and, and they don't work as hard and then they wonder why their income goes up and down and yo-yo, you know? And, uh, you know, you just, you just come to realize as I've gotten older that what you're doing is you're hiring from a broken world. You really are. You're hiring from a broken world where people are okay with that. And for me, in my space and in my friends that I have, right, we're not okay with that. So we constantly push each other. Look, the reason why I'm working hard and, and I'm kind of telling this to everyone else, and if you're listening to this on the podcast, just know this, is that right now I'm building the foundation because we are going to have an economic collapse. We are going to see a correction in both the equities and uh, the real estate market. I don't know when. 
quite frankly, I wish it happens much earlier than than what I think it will happen, but that's a really selfish thing because a lot of people are gonna get hurt. So I'm telling people to prepare, right? Put money in the bank, put it away, right? And, and then have access to capital or lines of credit and build relationship with people that when that happens, when they're fear on the street, you know, and literally people are scared People were literally scared that their life saving is going to disappear. They were scared because they couldn't keep a roof over their heads. You know, I was one of them, right? If you're a young person, remember this, okay? Financial stress is one of the, the highest level of stress in anything, I believe, you know? And I could be wrong, people can argue, let me know. Um, but I believe financial stress, and one of the reasons why people divorce, right, is because of financial issues, right? Why partnership goes bad, right? Is it because of a lot of financial issues? So if you're young and you've never been through a recession, or maybe you've been through it, maybe your parents been through it, and maybe you thought that you saw them struggle, and maybe because they maybe briefly told them that, oh yeah, things aren't going well, okay? But it's a little bit different when the buck stops with you. Right, it really is because I know a lot of my listeners are young people because I see the analytics. I see I see you guys, the analytics, where you're listening from, and if you, went through that just know that your parents went through some things they just probably didn't tell you and just know when that thing happens again be ready because that's when you can leapfrog and you can actually what make a generation worth the wealth and that's what I was telling my friend yesterday about this where where he was talking about like having struggle challenges putting money away and saving because of you know running the business as well as you know things happen in life right things happen right so 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 I was just like put money away put money away right and I said look man you can try to invest and do some things here and there right and maybe make a couple couple million dollars right I was like that's cool and all but I said it's a little bit more risky Versus the market corrects and then you have a strong foundation, access to capital, your own capital, you build strong relationship with your investors, um, you have your contractor team, you have you know the online presence, you have your social proof, right? You have everything built out, screw seven figures, right? Go make a hundred million. And that's what you can literally do when the next correction happens. More millionaires or more multimillionaires are made when there's fear. Not when this like feel good is going on right now, because right now everything feels good, all right? And you'll probably hear it in the financial news. I haven't watched the financial news, but um, there's an index called the VIX index that's currently in place where they actually measure fear in the marketplace. And right now it's at historical low. So meaning everyone's feeling great about the market. And in this case, when I say the market, I'm talking about the S&P 500, but usually the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones, right? They kind of correlate and stuff like that, okay? So, so people feel good. So the interesting front, as I keep on talking about the financial literacy, the understanding, you gotta elevate your game if you are a business owner, not just in the craft that you're in, but also you gotta elevate your financial literacy on how to maneuver through all of this, okay? In terms of understanding the tax component, understanding customer acquisition, understanding how investing works. And it's something that I've been preaching. And you know, I'll end with this, is as I'm getting close to the office here. So the story is this, is that as I was talking to my friend, he makes, you know, like I said, you know, like 200 grand or whatever, right? And he's telling me about how he can't put money away. And I'm just like, dude, you need to be putting away, you need to be putting away like 100 grand or something like that, right? You need to be putting away 100 grand, 150 grand, and live off of 40 grand a year, right? That's what you need to do. Live off 40 grand a year, put away 150 grand, man. You do that in the next two, three, four years, you know, if you the market keeps on going the way it is, right? What, in four or five years, you're gonna have at least a million dollars, um, or at least a half a million dollars in cold hard cash that you're gonna have. And when you have that, you know, hey, you can get a line and you can compound it and you can 10X it, right? So for example, I have an investor of mine that I paid tremendous amount of return in the heydays when I used to do a lot of deals. And he has told me, he said, look, Jeff, he's all like, I'll match you 9X on what you do any single time, any deal that you have. But he said, but you gotta put a little bit more skin in the game. Probably he'll give me 100%, but I just have to pay him a lot more in interest, right? Which I don't wanna really do. So the idea is this, is that if you get a hundred grand in cash, right? I have a million dollar line, right? I get a million dollars, I have a $10 million line, right? And those are the type of relationships that you need to have. And if you've been following the podcast, I talk about a deal in Phoenix that I raised over $14 million, um, literally with a pick, a phone, a phone, a phone call. And I was going to move forward on it initially until I started underwriting the, the apartment complex. And I was like, nah, I don't want to buy this because it wasn't a smoking hot deal. 
right? And those opportunities are going to happen again. Right, and it's a long game, ladies and gentlemen. All right, especially if you're young, right? And I know this because I was young too, one age, you know. And then you're just kind of like, I want to make a lot of money, but build it, you know, build it, build it, build it, build your personal brand, build goodwill in the marketplace that you're serving. Okay, build another one is a build an email list. I can't stress this enough, right? Build a contact list, a Rolodex. There's a reason why, like right now, you know, hey, I've had some issues with my past businesses and stuff like that, but I can get back up and start rebuilding it at a rapid speed is because I can send an email to a quarter of a million people every single week. Now, I'm not saying that to brag or anything like that, but that's the power of if you do and build it right and you build a Rolodex of people, then you have the ability to not only influence, and, and again, I'm, I'm saying you gotta do it in the right way. You know, Give genuine value to these people, and as you do these, these people will stay on your list. Some of the people on my email list has been on my email list for over 10 years. And they open my email and they, I see it because they read it, right? And they've bought products of mine, and also at the same time, they've helped me uh, grow some of my other businesses. So again, that's my my recommendation is because we all know the old cliche saying as I pull up in the office is what your net worth is the size of your network and then the fastest way to do that is to build a Rolodex right it can be phone numbers or email addresses and do that and keep on putting money away because the reality is this don't worry about what the outside world thinks right because um, I'll end with this is that the story of when I was talking to my wife and she was telling me that some of her colleagues and friends look at what I'm doing and inst instantly presume that I'm broke and or I'm not doing well right and which is and, and I was just like really and I was just like well that's good that's what I said you know, because I was just like, I don't want people to know what I'm doing, right? And the only reason why I do these contents and I throw out the stuff is because I know it's important to build a personal brand and I know it's important to be able to tell my story uh, out in the world. But if I didn't, like, if the business world didn't require this, right? Like, meaning, like, I worked at a job, you know, I'm just grinding, putting money away, investing, right? I would not want to be on the internet. I would not even pick up and say a word, right? But then the sheer fact of where I'm at and why I'm trying to build a strong foundation and network of literally soldiers, right? That's what I want. I want soldiers that as the market corrects, I can go ahead and take advantage of the marketplace and that's why I tell these stories. But it was funny because her friends presume that I work because one, I. I'm broke or something, I guess. I don't I honestly don't know, um, which is okay because look, I'm not trying to keep up, keep up with the Joneses as they say, right? And so again, I'll end with this, right? Is just know when you look at someone that you maybe look up to, regardless of what it is, just know that typically that's not the 100% truth. It never is. And I know I said I was gonna make a last point on this, but here's, here's the last point on this, right? Is as I've been saying is to read people's biographies, okay? Especially entrepreneurs, if you're looking to grow a massive business, so read entrepreneurs' biography, okay? But be selective on the biography that you read, okay? So number one, I'll give you a prime example. Henry Ford, one of the biographies I read, okay, is pro, meaning that they're pro Henry Ford, and they'll say he was an amazing entrepreneur, he changed uh, America, and made America on the map, right, by creating the Model T, okay? And then I've read another biography about Henry Ford, where the person is basically saying, no, Henry Ford almost destroyed this country, right? And they'll talk about things that he did, like stopping unions from actually what, forming, Right, So he didn't want to form unions because he knew that unions can actually make lose control of his workers. So what did he do? He ended up you know, paying the employees two times, three times more than what other companies were paying. And on top of that, he had a what security guard was borderline mafia that would monitor all of his workers' uh, things that he did. Okay, and they will provide housing. And the reason why he would provide housing um, is because he wanted to monitor what his workers were doing. Versus on the other side, people that are for Henry Ford will say, hey, that was the greatest move ever. Where, hey, providing housing for the workers, right? And then paying them two times to three times more minimum wage that where they were getting paid. So not only did they, they made more money, but they got housing and they were able to live a quality life. And then going back to the other biography, they talk about how the environment that the factory that they had later on in life, these people struggled to live because of the sawdust they were inhaling, um, because of the you know things that they were doing in there, right? So again, the point I'm telling you all of this is to read and understand the biography, understand other sides of the story because perception is reality, but there's an asterisk on that. Reality to who? 
all right? Probably reality to the listeners, the reality to the viewers, but in the reality of what actually happened with that individual that maybe you're looking up to or maybe you're wondering, hey, why is that person doing that, okay? That's probably not the case. And that's what I challenge you guys and gals to do because what the internet is going to do is one, Yes, it's going to give transparency, meaning that now you want to look at history of someone that actually did something right and actually, you know, hey, talking the talk. Because what you can do is you could literally on the internet, right? But because of the history that you can Google people and see the history, right? Because if someone's claiming to be an expert of something, you can literally pull it up and then be like, well, how come I don't see anything from uh, four or five years ago? I only see something that just happened in the last six months. Yeah, it's called SEO. You can actually do that, right? You can control the content on the internet, right? So so yes, the internet will give transparency, but you, you got to understand how people can social engineer and control that. And I'll end with this. My recommendation is pick up the book, um, Ryan Holiday, uh, Confessions of a Media Manipulator. If you are into this kind of stuff where you can learn about how, kind of this is the, this is the Ryan Holiday was the first guy to talk about the fake news before fake news became popular in the States. Read about it and you'll learn exactly how big media companies manipulate it as well as how you could use it, you know, uh, for your business and to build your personal brand. But I say, hey, use it for good. Don't use it for evil things, okay? But pay attention to the perception of reality because again, the asterisk is, Whose reality is it? Is it your reality or is it the other person's uh, reality? And the truth is, no one really knows. All right, so that's what I got. I got to get in the office. I got a lot of work to do. Uh, this is Jeff Koga. I uh, appreciate the fact for the folks that have left comment. Montello, thank you. No problem. And whoever has been watching, thank you so much. Um, and I will talk to you all later. Take care. Bye-bye.